Okay. Okay, now the most important one though, these are just fun properties. These is the intro. Let's talk about the real, the biggest property in fluids is of course the pressure. All right, pressure. Okay, here we go. This is a mind blower. Here we go. It's a scalar property of fluids. What? Right, a scalar property of fluids that creates forces. That creates forces. on surfaces. And it is in uh, Newtons per meter squared, right? That's the MKS, if you wanted the MKS, the full MKS unit, it'd be kilograms per meter second squared, right? Because this is kilogram meters per second squared and a couple of meters in the bottom. Okay, but that has a special name, it's called a Pascal. In parentheses, PA is the abbreviation. So one Newton meter squared is a Pascal which is a really teeny uh, pressure. So uh, uselessly small pressure. Okay, um, so one thing to keep in mind is that it really is uh, a scalar. So if you see this, you say, well, if it's in Newtons per meter squared, doesn't it have to be a vector? The answer is no, it doesn't have to be a vector. Okay, the unit doesn't make something a vector. The quantity makes it a vector. Okay, so just because it's in Newtons, it doesn't mean it's a vector. Let's draw a gas here, or let's draw um, we're going to do pressure in terms of gases first, and then we'll do fluids, okay? So here we go. If you were to zoom in, you know, really small, and you can see the atoms, there's one going that way. And maybe if you took a little PCHEM in elementary school, you know that they're going some average velocity with a Boltzmann distribution or something like that. And occasionally they bounce off the walls, okay? So we would say, based on the properties of this gas, that this is at some pressure uh, P. And if this were physical chemistry, we would now talk about PV equals NRT and blah, 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 but we're not going to, okay? Because instead, let's think about this. Let's look at the force, or let's uh, think about this happening right here. Look at that. A gas molecule is going this way, bounced off the wall, now it's going this way, right? What did it deliver to the wall? Impulse, right? What is impulse? Force times time. Ah, it delivered a force to the wall. This one, bounced straight back. Oh, it delivered a much bigger force. This one was what we call a glancing blow. It delivered much less force. But on average, they deliver a force uh, to the wall. So the molecules deliver F to the wall. And if you add it all up together, you would say the total force they apply over the area of the wall is the pressure. So notice I put a magnitude bar on that vector to make it a scalar, because this thing needs to be a scalar. Okay. P equals FA. Let's see. Mm. But we do know that force is a vector. So let's think about the vector version for just a second. Here we go. Um, what we would say then, in terms of vector forces, we would say the force equals minus PA. So two weird things there. First of all, uh, what's going on here? We've got to have WTF on that negative sign. And also we've got to make it a vector. And I said pressure can't be a vector. So what has to be a vector? The negative sign is a vector. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the area is a vector. That's killed. Okay. So two weird things about that equation. Area is a vector and it's negative. Strange. Uh, after the collision molecules on each other and the walls, are, are the collisions perfectly elastic? No. Uh, well, yeah. it depends if the metal's clean or not. So a, a raw metal, the gas will stick, and then the gas builds up a layer on the surface, and then the molecules bounce off the layer, largely elastic. They can give, well, they can give energy to the wall, but the wall also has energy, so it gives it back. So in the end, it's elastic. Yeah. But it depends on the chemical surface and everything. Um, Okay, so area is a vector, is one way we explain this. So I think we may have dealt with this before, I can't remember, but if you just have an area like this, some area A, it has a vector perpendicular to the surface sticking out. Right. So you can always actually get a vector from an area. So I technically I needed to put that on there as well. In physics, area is always a vector. Um, the magnitude is A and the direction is perpendicular. But we're not going to worry too much 
about that, right? Because again, we're not doing gases. I'm just trying to get it in your head what pressure really is, okay? So we're going to stick to scalars. Um, this stands for why the flip-flop, okay? And here's the reason. So this molecule is bouncing off this way. Which way is the area? Well, it's perpendicular that way. But which way is the force? Oh, the force is that way. So technically, if you go deep into physics of forces and pressures, there's negative signs everywhere for that very reason. Although you could arbitrarily say, oh, no, no, the area is also this way. I mean, you can make the area whichever way you want. The only convention is if you have a closed surface, it sticks out. But it, but it depends. So basically, don't worry about this negative sign. Okay? We're just largely doing scalar magnitudes. Okay? But if you ever see a negative sign in that formula, that's a reason. Just preparing you for the future. Okay? You must understand pressure. Okay? One of my kids, I'll protect their identity, had a congenital heart defect and had a valvuloplasty when they were three days old. Okay? That's like where they put the balloon in, you know? And uh, the interns were all there telling, telling me the details of how they're going to do it. And uh, I said, they said, well, you know, right now the pressure's three, but we're hoping to get it to six. I said, oh, okay, like with what unit? They're like, oh, I don't know, three to six. Right? They didn't know the unit. And I was like, well, we just lost a Mars rover a few years ago over a unit, right? Remember that? I don't know if you know about that. The Mars Explorer, they sent the uh, thrust information from one group to another, and they sent it in MKS. And they thought it was in Newton or pound inches. And that's why we lost the Mars rover, or the Mars Explorer, before your time. Okay, so scientists do screw up units. So these interns didn't know what the unit was. I was like, okay, do y'all do you think you're using the same unit? And they go, oh yeah, we're using the same unit. Like, Jesus, okay. <laughs> and then I talked to the actual doctor who was going to do it, and he knew the unit, or at least he made up a unit, and I felt better. I don't know, but <laughs> in medicine, they often just assume they all use the same unit, but you know, hopefully nobody gets that mixed up. Comedy killer, yes, the story about the. Uh, let's see, he's fine now. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, so what we're going to think about now is we've said that the air is under pressure and the force applies uh, a pressure. Of, ugh, pressure applies a force to an area. Okay. So now what we're going to do is though we're going to think about the net force. If we say that, then if I hold this post-it note here, here's the area, and the atmosphere is applying a force. Oh my God! There it goes. I, as soon as I let go. No, that doesn't happen, right? Because we've got to think of the net force on the post-it note. The net force um, on an area depends um, on the pressure on each side. On each side. So up here, I implied there was a net force outward on the walls. Well, it depends on what's on the other side of the wall. Right? If there's the same pressure on the other side of the wall, then the wall doesn't feel anything. Right? It just depends. So here for this demo, here is Hertzstein Amphitheater here. Right? Here's a little penguin over here or whatever. Okay? And then the area is this post-it note that I just threw around like this. Right? So we hold up the post-it note like that. Let's see what it feels. This post-it note is our area. Uh, let's do a calculation. Oh my God, I just told my story about how important it is to use MKS units. Now I'm going to use uh, uh, Queen of England units, whatever they're called. F equals what? Uh, P times A. What's the atmospheric pressure? 14.7 uh, pounds per inch squared, also known as PSI. Okay? So this is so common in the world that we are actually going to do some of our problems in PSI. Okay? Can't get away from it. You'd never be able to pump up your tires if you only think in Pascals. Okay? What's the area of a post-it note? It's on the MCAT. What is it? Quick. <laughs> you don't know? It's three by three. It's nine inches squared. Nine inches squared. So the force, this is kind of mind-blowing. The force on one side of the post-it note is like one of you guys, 132 pounds. Right? It's like one of you, on average, close, standing on the post-it note. Is how much force is being applied to this side of the post-it note. You would think it would fly off. But of course, the reason is it's on both sides, like we said. So you have 132 pounds pushing it this way. Okay? But you can't possibly have a surface with one side, can you? No. So you also have 132 pounds pushing it that way. 
If you put a Mobius strip in the air, no, it has two sides. Okay, it doesn't fly around. That would be cool, though. Okay. Um, so F net, right? So this is F right, but F net equals F right plus F left, which equals zero. That's the point. Okay. Now, if you want to see it move, I could uh, apply a higher pressure to one side by blowing on it like this. See, higher pressure on this side, and what did it do? It moved. It didn't accelerate because it bent, and then the elastic forces of the paper pulled it back up, and we reached some static equilibrium. But you can see there was a force blowing it that way. So that's a case where we, if we imbalance the forces, something will feel, a, you know, if we imbalance the pressures, something will feel a force. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, show you the atmosphere, how strong the atmospheric pressure is, right? So this, we're going to get something really cold with liquid nitrogen here. Oh, look out, watch your toes. There it comes. You're only in risk if you have a toe ring on. Does anybody have a toe ring on in the front row? No, okay, good. Okay, so what we're going to do is I hear you like to uh, play with these. I don't know, it's like a red solo cup, okay? So what we're going to do is think all the way back to this. If I have this red solo cup here, and it has some pressure, and suddenly I cool it off and make those molecules go slower, if they go slower, when they hit the wall, they're going to give it less what? Less impulse, and they're going to give it less force. So just by slowing down the molecules, the pressure goes down. If the pressure goes down, then I have atmosphere on this side, and I have less on this side. So maybe we'll see the atmosphere crush the red solo cup. Why is force in pounds? What is the unit of force? I'm using pounds for a unit of force. I'm just, that's what people do, okay? Pound and Newton, I forgot the number. I'll look it up for you, though. Um, okay, so we got to do those. we got to put it in there, and we got to, you know, let it cool off, but we got to seal it. So this is just a coaster, right? You can do this at parties. It's a coaster. If you can get liquid nitrogen, it's very cheap. And we'll just set it right there. And see if it goes. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, what does FP and FL, oh, these are just, I was saying force right and force left. I was just thinking about how the two forces should balance each other out. All right. You're supposed to do this with a big metal drum, but then it's not very safe, is it? Wow, it worked yesterday. Mm, okay, this is too light. Here's the one I was using yesterday, but it blocks your view. It's too, it's like all cold in there. Okay. Oh, here we go. That'll hold it on there better. And then it's going to pop. Oh, no! <laughs> the drama of crushing the cup. So what's happening? The molecules are going slower and slower. And then the atmosphere wins. Look at that. I heard y'all like to sink cups. So if these are now cracked, and then you can sink the cup. Let's see. Let me try another one. You're supposed to, like, walk off all cool and lecture, and then it goes, bam! But, you know, there's limits to how much we care. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Oh, that was exciting. Okay. Okay, so that's... Oh, I didn't draw it. You don't need me to draw it. Okay. So that shows you the atmosphere pressure is really big. We'll have more thinking about the atmospheric pressure uh, soon. Don't worry. So now what we want to do is uh, look at hydrostatics. Okay, you now understand pressure. You understand the forces it makes. That all makes sense. So now we're going to get into hydrostatics and what a lot of homework problems can be about. Okay, let's see. So we've done the nature of pressure in liquids and gases, including sources and forces. And now, how gravity, now we're going to do hydrostatics. All right.